Hello. I don't know for those of you who are watching from, it just started downpouring here in the, the DC area, which will hopefully bring some relief to the crazy humidity and maybe wash away some of the cicadas in the process. <laughs> I know those of you who are watching the DC area can probably relate to the, wanting the cicadas and the humidity to go away. So with that all being said, let's dive in to our topic. You ladies know the drill. Those of you watching the replay, let us know, hashtag replay. You can share your questions and comments after. Those of you watching live, if you want to, just say that you're here and also feel free to chirp in with your comments and questions as we're going through our session today. Our topic, what you do isn't who you are. How to cultivate confidence as a leader. This is a topic that was inspired based on working with my clients, our conversation in the group, and my own experiences. And this is a challenge that is common and it, it can be very destructive. And I'm, I'm having this dialogue with all of you today, first as a, as a coach, as someone who supports other women and working through these challenges, but also as a, a fellow human being who has also experiences, still to this day, sometimes conflating who I am with what I do. And that, that blurred lines of that relationship there. So I'm, I'm coming to you with knowledge from what I've worked on with my clients to help you, but also speaking from my own personal experience as someone who continues to grow in this area and sharing some things that have really helped me separate who I am from what I do. And to start off by being very open and honest, I have experienced this on a very, very destructive level. And some of you know more about my, my history, but growing up in high school and college, I struggled years with disordered eating and eating disorders. So for me in that situation, it was literally like my appearance was who I was. And it showed up in other ways too, with my work, with my grades, like what, what my results were, were. My results were literally who I was, but having experienced it in such a destructive way where I was literally destroying my, my health and myself, I, I, I know what this is like. And it can be very destructive. And of course, if, if anyone is it experiences this on a very destructive level, please, please get help because sometimes this, this mindset can lead to us to do very harmful things to ourselves and just know um, that there are people that can support you. And if you ever want to chat offline, just know I'm here for you. But we're going to be talking about this a little bit in a more milder form and not dismissing it, but how this shows up for us as leaders in our professional lives as well as our personal lives because it all blends together. What we're going to go through in our session today is we're going to go through the three most common areas that I see in my work where we associate who we are and what we do together. So we're going to talk through these three common areas and how they show up for us and some things that we can rethink about these areas to be just to, to be happier, more fulfilled, and also to be more effective as leaders. And then at the end, I'm going to wrap everything up and talk through kind of three overarching tools that you can use to support yourself in separating the incredible person who that you are from being viewed as only the, the end result of the things that you're doing in your life. And I'm sure, I know I gave my example earlier, that kind of more destructive example of how I've experienced this type of mentality, but I also experienced it years later after college in the workplace. Uh, people working constantly, burning themselves out, stressed out, uh, feeling like you have to be, we have to be available 24 seven, feeling like bad about ourselves if maybe we're not making a certain amount of money or we're not achieving or we're not at a certain status. So. In American culture, I can't speak, I know to um, a few of you are in this group are not, don't live in the States, but so I can't speak to that. 
but definitely in American culture, there's this, this, this em emphasis on what we're producing, what we're doing, and it ties into our self-worth. And the three areas that we're going to look at specifically now are productivity, money, and achievement slash status. And looking at how each of these areas, we may have a un, I don't want to say unhealthy relationship. It could be an unhealthy relationship, but an intertwined relationship where our sense of self and our self-worth is too interconnected with these things. We're going to talk about each of these things, how this shows up, and just give you some, some perspective, some food for thought that might help you separate who you are from each of these areas. So first, starting with productivity. Whew, productivity. That's a huge one, right? And I know a couple of you shared this week in the group, having been in organizations where someone who didn't want to work 24 seven was deemed as lazy, how we feel like sometimes we can't disconnect. Um, even for us who are entrepreneurs, sometimes we feel like we can't put our phones away we have to uh, always be there for our clients, got to always be on. And we, we judge ourselves by how much we're working, maybe if we're working hard enough, if we're not being productive, if we're being lazy, what our outcomes are, how we're achieving our goals. So. You know, let me know if that's resonating when it comes with productivity. And here's what's interesting about productivity. It's, we, in our society, we've kind of misdefined productivity. So even looking at how we work, the typical, what, nine to five, that comes from the old kind of factory model of working. When people worked in factories, they had to be there nine to five to produce certain things. Now, not all of us, but, but many of us, I think watching here, we, we we're doing jobs that are more relying on not necessarily physical or manual things that we're doing, but being in an office using, I don't want to say you don't use your brain in a manual job, but just a different, different way of working. And it was actually predicted. I, I, I can share the article after if you want to see this, but it was predicted that back in the, I think the 80s, that with this rise of technology, that we'd actually be working less because we have so many more things automated for us. But in fact, it's become the opposite. It's become the opposite. We're working more. We're working more. So even looking at productivity, like how we might judge ourselves on productivity, to even slow down there, it's like sometimes wondering, is working all of this time, is everything I'm putting out, is that truly productive? So first defining, like, what the hell is productivity? Probably should have looked that up before I um, came on here today. It'd be great to get a, a dictionary definition. I'm um, actually going to do that while I'm talking to you. Product, let's see, what is productivity defined as? Yeah. The state or quality of producing something, the rate of production, oh, by new biomass, okay, that's like a um, biological definition, but the state or quality of producing something. So I'm glad I looked that up because if we look at productivity as producing something, do we really need to be working like crazy people to produce something? Especially looking at what it is that we're producing. And a lot of times, especially things that are coming from your, your creativity, your skills, things take time to produce and producing things also requires rest. I mean, if we're looking at something as simple as planting crops in the field or plants, they don't just sprout right up, right? There's a process, there's time that the plants die, you have to replant the seeds. I'm not an expert on gardening, but I'm sure you get the deal. So if you're someone that maybe you associate who you are with how productive you are, Looking at, okay, what is even productivity? And am I more focused, am I just focused on the, the action of appearing productive, of being productive over the sake of the results? Now, the results I'm going to talk more about in the achievements part. That's that We can get into sticky territory there. But right now, I'm really just looking at uh, the output of how we're working, that type of 
how we look at productivity there. And I'm not saying that things in life don't require hard work. Of course, we, things don't happen overnight. But is working the way you're working, doing the thing that you're doing, actually producing, right, productivity, producing what you want to produce? Because there might be something you're working on as, as a work project, but we're looking at the life that you want to produce for yourself and how that ties into that. So that's productivity. Second is money. Whew. Money is a big one. I find, in my opinion, that we live in a society where it's like, it's obsessed with money, but we're also not supposed to talk about money. So it creates this, this weird relationship where some of us may, you know, have, might want money, but also think money's gross, or we might experience both, one or the other, which can lead to shame around money. Money, there's, there's many ways we could talk about this. I'm going to focus this, though, on especially my entrepreneurs here, and maybe some of you who are working in a corporate world can also relate to this, about setting our prices and our rates. So like I mentioned before, money sometimes is viewed at, like we're obsessed with it, like money defines who you are, or money is bad, it's evil, it's greedy. We don't, we can look at it that way. But I find most of us tend to hold contradicting views. Like we have parts of us, I, and again, this is not for everyone, but I find that part, a part of us sometimes is like, ooh, I want money. But then there's another part that might judge wanting money even as bad. So tell me if this, if those of you who are watching, um, even on the replay, if this resonates. And this is a way I see this, though, with at least with the women I work with, is that they want to make a great living. They want to be able to live the lifestyle they want. And one way money can come up as a um, kind of a self-sabotage or, or feeling bad about themselves is feeling like they have to build this huge business to live the life they want. I see this with a lot of coaches where it's like, build this huge coaching business, like make all this money, build a seven figure business. And the reality is you don't have to build a huge business to have a business that you love. Or maybe you're not where you want your business yet. And maybe you're feeling like, oh, I'm not that, you know, I, I didn't create six figures overnight. What's wrong with me? Because it seems like all these other people are doing that. Really recognizing, like, first of all, you don't have to build, you don't have to make all this money to be successful. Successful is how you define it, what's important to you in your life. So recognizing that and also recognizing that even if you aren't where you want to be there, be that, things are a process. Things take time. And that's okay. You're exactly where you're meant to be. This also ties into a bit more what we're talking about with achievements. These all kind of blend in together, but feeling that pressure to make a lot of money. Now, on the flip side, what I see is working all my clients, all of them are women, they want to do good. So they're in business or they're in some type of leadership role. They want to give back. They want to do good. They want to make a difference. And I saw the same mentality in the nonprofit space where it's like charging for something that is doing good feels wrong. There's a great TED talk. I forget the name where this guy look kind of busts through. He's like, you know, when Coca-Cola makes a lot of money, we don't think anything of it, but we judge a nonprofit that brings in a lot of money. Like, Why can't charity work make money? Like, why does it have to be nonprofit when they're doing good? Right? It kind of makes you think. Like, it, it's kind of backwards there. And with my clients, sometimes they undercharge because they feel like, oh, like, you know, I shouldn't charge too much, much. I need to be accessible to everyone. I need to be affordable. And this is a, a trap I fell into. And this, saying this might trigger some of you watching this because you might be thinking, well, shouldn't I have to make my, 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 my rates affordable? If not, you know, like, what... That, that, that it's wrong. Like, I have to be affordable. I have to be able to reach as many people as possible. And I just want to bust through that myth right now. First of all, if you're doing a business that's doing good, that's wonderful. You don't have to mix your, your charity with your business. <laughs> you can do your do good charitable activities where you're doing things for free. It doesn't have to mix with your business. And sure, it can. It can, of course. Like you can as you grow your business. You might want to do some things, but you don't 
have to put those two together. So that's one. Second, do you think Louis Vuitton, Chanel, the, these other companies, do you think they're sitting there and thinking, we have to really make what we do, we have to make our products affordable? No. And is there any, would you judge Chanel or Louis Vuitton for that? Probably not. You'd probably say no. Like, people don't have to buy their purses. You know, if you choose to buy that purse, like, spend 3000 5000 however much it is on a on a Chanel bag like that's your choice it's not their responsibility to make their their rates affordable right if not you can go you can go buy a purse at, at Target or wherever else you want so thinking about that with your business too by charging a certain rate that is of course integrity with the value you're delivering right charging that rate doesn't doesn't mean like people are forced to pay that if people don't want to pay that rate that's okay, you can wish them well, and they can go find another service instead. It doesn't make you bad or um, not, not a good person for discounting your rates. And I know just to kind of add to this, I know years ago in business, it was that like if someone said they, they didn't have the money to work with me or like, oh, your rates are too expensive, it was really what would come up for me is like, oh, they don't like me. I'm doing something wrong. But separating myself from the money, which is just a freaking number, it's a number. It's like, okay, these are my rates. This aligns with the value. If, you, if this aligns, great. If it doesn't, that's cool too. So really thinking about that, where your relationship with money might be too intertwined and causing you to either earn less, like charge less lower your prices, compromise yourself, or like we said before, on the other extreme, put a lot of pressure on yourself to have to make all this money. It's money. Third here is achievements, recognition, status, and how that can get intertwined with who we are. This is a, this is, a, I mean, this is a complicated one because, you know, we grow up getting graded on things, getting A on a paper, a B, a C, a D, an F. And then I think with the millennial generation, we also grow up with um, participation trophies where it's like everyone should be a winner. So kind of like money, it's like this weird relationship there. And I use this example with the money, but sometimes we can get into self-comparison. We look at maybe what someone else has achieved and we think that, oh, I should be achieving that. What's wrong with me for not having those achievements? Maybe it's someone who's a business owner like you or someone who's maybe the same age as you or something like that. And we start to compare like where we are in life. And we talked about this in a video a couple weeks ago about just not letting go of the words that I'm behind, I'm ahead and just stop that comparison and recognizing that you're exactly where you need to be on your journey. And everyone's journey is unique. It doesn't make one person's journey better than or worse than the other. Even though society might say, oh, like you climbed the ladder really fast, that's a good thing. I mean, says who? <laughs> says who, even though society says it for, for yourself, if that doesn't truly really matter to you, then why are you making it matter? So with achievements, recognition, and status here, really, if you're wanting to disentangle who you are from, from achievements is looking at are these achievements like are these achievements that are even important to you or they're just that what you've been told you're supposed to do or you're supposed to value. So those are the, the three big areas and some things to think about there. And now I'm going to Summarize with three key points to think about here, especially for those of you who are leaders and CEOs. So first remembering that when who we are is very intertwined with what we do, we're making it all about ourselves. And we lived in a self, we live honestly in a very self-absorbed society. So I, I'm not saying this with judgment, but when we're very focused on like, what we're producing as who we are, we're, we're making it all about us. And we know as leaders, as business owners, as CEOs, it's not about us. It's not. This doesn't mean 
self-sacrificing, like, you know, charging too low of, of rates. I mean, it, this can, being self-absorbed can look like very egotistical, but it can also look very like, oh, I'm just going to shrink. I'm going to hide. Like we're still making it about ourselves. So letting yourself, leaving yourself out of it, letting go of yourself in a way, and just, just taking action and noticing where your thoughts are starting to make things all about you and just letting it go changing that lens. Second here, when we're caught in associating who we are with what we do, look at the meaning you're giving to things. Like if you notice money is something that you feel like your, your self-worth gets very attached to, what's the meaning you're giving money? What if money were simply neutral to you? Imagine, not good, not bad, just neutral. How would that shift your relationship with money? Particularly how your self-worth pertains to money. So you could do that with any one of these things. Really look at the meaning that you're giving these things and asking questions about it. And the third thing here is an analogy that may be helpful for you to, to take into your everyday life. So. We have who we are, and then obviously in, in, in our life, we fall into different roles. So it might be a daughter, a mother, a sister, a friend, a business owner, a, a coach. These are just roles. They're not who we are, right? Like I, I'm a daughter. I don't sit around being like, oh my God, that's just who I am. I'm just a daughter, right? So thinking about the things that you don't get, like I'm sure if you're a sister or sibling to someone, you're probably not putting your self-worth into being a sister, or you might. But thinking of areas of your life roles that, that you're in where you don't define your, let those things define you, where you think of the roles in your life that don't define who you are, that you don't let those things define who you are, and using that same mentality, it, mentality in the areas of your life where you do tend to associate those roles as your identity. Another way to think about it is like, yeah, I have blonde hair, I have blue eyes. You could say, oh, I'm a blonde haired. If, if you describe me like, oh, that's a blonde haired woman. She has blue eyes. It doesn't make me who I am. So differentiating who you are from the roles in your life. Pause here. I see we have a couple live, so if you ladies have any questions or just want to say hi, feel free to do so, and for those of you catching the replay as well. And really just, just remembering this is a journey, and just, just knowing like who you are could never be confined to something as arbitrary as what you do. So just thinking about that, like who you are and that association with what you do, whether it's your, your achievements, how productive you are, money, appearance, just those things are just things. They just are. And they're, they're absolutely not you. And you're so much more than any of the roles that you play in your life and any of the things that you do. I'm gonna wrap it up here, but it was great speaking with all of you and I look forward to continuing the conversation.